and we are at Chocolates by Padovani in Dole County Square. And today's special guest for Hawaii RRL is... is me! Because <laughs> it's what? all about me today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, well, yeah. anyway, seriously, seriously. <laughs> um, a lot of people know Nocturnal Beast on Twitter. They know him as this guy who takes a lot of pictures. They know him as my co-host. Um, they know him in Nasa Honolulu, but they don't know that he's an actual pastry chef. And so he's going to tell us a little bit about some of the stuff that he's made in chocolate, since we are at a chocolate yeah. place. And he's an artist. He's an artiste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, probably the, the one chocolate piece that I, I've become known for is um, my chocolate dragon. So uh, this dragon is actually made from 30 pounds of solid chocolate. You know, and then... Um, he melted it down? Melted it down. Well, it actually went to a silent auction, so... The, the, the whole thing about this chocolate dragon came about because uh, when I was working on the mainland, I came home to visit, and then the chef I apprenticed under was um, getting together some students for a kind of a fundraiser slash competition, and he kind of asked me to, to put something together for him. So as a favor to him, I, I made this piece, and then um, what happened was they, um, it was for hugs. So they auctioned it off, you know, and all the proceeds went to hugs. Okay, hugs is... Help, uh, help, understanding, and group support. Yeah. Right. So um, basically, uh, what I did was, I just, um, a lot of people assume that when you're carving chocolate, you just start with this big block and you just kind of chip away like you're doing like wood. marble. Yeah. yeah. Well, but the thing about chocolate is you can melt it. So you can actually, like, you know, melt it and then make it into different forms. So while you're. Okay. Yeah. So so I didn't actually have this block and chipped away at it. I actually just made this serpentine shape with the melted chocolate. Did you have a mold or you use your hands? Like you um, kinda... I had to kind of, uh, you know, think of a way how to how to do it. So, um, but yeah, I don't want to say how to do it. Cause it's no, a secret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my my own little secret. Oh, Shh, okay. No, but. Yeah, so um, I carved it out for the chef, and then, you know, we, we took it to the, the competition. You know, of course, it took first place. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Maybe. But, yeah, um, it, it went for an auction for, um, you know, $1,200. Wow. Yeah, and, and then you figure, like, it basically cost me nothing because, like, the, the people putting on the competition, they gave me the chocolate, so I had it. All I had to do was just make so it. was just your time. It. Yeah. And then, so, you know... Twelve hundred dollars just went to you know the charity. Who bought it? Great. Do you know who bought it? Uh, that I don't know because it was silent auctions. So. Oh. oh. Yeah, but pe everybody who sees it, they always ask me, "Is like, oh, what happened? Did the person who buy it just eat it?" And I always like to think that they at least took it back to wherever they work and put it on display for a while before the they while, yeah. tear tore the head off and started chewing on his <laughs> nose or something. <laughs> How long does it last? Um, for chocolate pieces, as long as you keep it in a you know, temper-controlled area where it's not too hot, not too cold. Uh, you can actually keep it for a year. Really? Yeah. Because you figure it's, it's no different than, you know, like having regular chocolate blocks wrapped up in a warehouse somewhere. So if it's in a um, nice controlled place, it would be okay, but yeah. taking it home would probably no, not. No, probably be. not. You know, like, with yeah. the temperature changes. And, yeah. You know. Oh, neat. Wait, yeah, so what else do you have? Uh, well, let's see. I also did... Is that you with hair? Yes, it is me with hair. Do you have a picture of that? Can, 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 hold it. Hold, hold it t show everybody you with hair. The picture of me with hair. So <laughs> this is me with hair. This is the dining out. So this is when I was uh, apprenticing. Yes, <laughs> hair. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to send this to you, but anyway. Well, now you talked about it. So. Yeah. <laughs> And what else? Okay, so this, this is another dragon. So this dragon was actually carved by an apprentice who went to the program before me named Ricky Tanabe. So we had it um, kind of in stores. We would use it for different buffets at the, the culinary school. And what happened was the culinary school, they rented this out to some hotel in Waikiki, which, whose initials is the Sheraton Waikiki. <laughs> and then when they brought initials? it... Initials? Yeah. So when they brought it back, you know, um, the chef told me to kind of take a look at it. And then when I, I tried to pick it up, I noticed that the tail wiggled. So literally, I grabbed the tail, and then I pulled the whole back half of this dragon off. 
So like, I showed it to the chef. So I had to actually kind of put it back together and, and fix it. Oh. Yeah. You know, so this was actually a, a 50 pounds of solid chocolate. Wow. You know, so um, I kind of like used this as the basis of when I made my other dragon for the competition. Oh, okay. Neat. Yeah, but it was kind of hard. Like, I really, like, Ricky figured out a way to make the serpentine shape, but I kind of had to. Secret. Yeah, I kind of had to think about it and figure out, well, how the hell did he do that? You know? But now you know his secret, or? Well, I, I still don't know his secret. I know how I did it. I oh, don't know okay, how okay. he did it. I can assume that we maybe just kind of found a similar way <laughs> to do it. <laughs> so, what else? Uh, Is that so, another one of you with hair? Yes, it was one with me with hair. This is me at the competition. With hair. With hair, yes. <laughs> Better get you some more cherries there. Jeez, what is... <laughs> Why do people so find it so strange that I have hair? <laughs> okay, this is a chocolate basket. With chocolate ribbons? Yeah, chocolate ribbons. Looks kind of like bacon. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, flowers are, the flowers are all made from uh, molding chocolate and marzipan, which is almond paste. Uh, and these are all edible, right? I mean, entirely know. edible. Okay. Are, are those gingerbread houses? Yes. And they're all edible, also, or uh, the only thing that's not edible on them are the the, car, the wood boards that they sit on. So are they held together with frosting? Uh, yeah, frosting and chocolate. Okay. So this this one was actually a village I did at the Greenbrier. So what happened was uh, usually they do it every year, but for some reason they kind of I guess forgot about it. And then one day the chef is like, oh, can you make a gingerbread village for us? Because he found out I, I knew By how to tomorrow? Do... Well, actually, no. He gave me four days. <laughs> yeah. That... So... Well, I guess that, that helps. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. So now you know you can do it in four days. So if somebody commissioned you to do a gingerbread village... Yeah, well, you... I wouldn't want to do it in four days. Well, but if you had again, to, like yeah. if they paid a premium, like, I'll pay you double. Is that you with hair again? Yes. <laughs> well, you're, you're just fascinated with me and hair. It's the back of his head. Yeah. What are you doing there? So this is um, called cocoa painting. So um, basically, um, it's just like doing regular watercolor and painting. And um, all you do is just take cocoa powder and a little bit of liquor. Just kind of make a paste and then same thing, you just paint with it. Okay. Well, very cool. Well, nice to know that you... And then this is the finished one. Oh, King Kamehameha. So you gotta have a little bit of artistic yeah. uh, talent there. Okay, this this one was kind of cool. This this is a gingerbread house of the yacht club I used to work at in Michigan. You know, so the, the first winter I lived in Michigan, I didn't know how to do anything in the winter, so I was kind of bored. So I, I actually went to the head of maintenance and I asked him, "Can I get the blueprints to the yacht club?" And he asked me why. I was like, "I'm gonna build a gingerbread house." So this is like, this sure is to are. scale. Wow, that's pretty cool. Of the actual yacht club. So if Parkrat gave you blueprints of his house, you could do a gingerbread Parkrat house. Probably. <laughs> with with uh, <laughs> alcohol cherries. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, very cool. Nice, nice to see all of your talents come to life, and um, hopefully, there's people out there who can who can use your talent. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, they, if they called him, would you do? Would yeah. Would, yeah, I could. So they can Put tweet on the spot. They yeah. can tweet you. They can email you. They can call you. They can Facebook you. Yeah, as as long as you give me some time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, well, try like, not um, to give him four days yeah. only to to a yeah. village. Well, like uh, I was at the community college earlier last week, helping them with their um, their culinary team, and then um, they actually mentioned, "Oh, we have a food show coming up on the tenth. You want to enter?" It's like, no, <laughs> kind of a little short notice. I need more time than that. Well, but good to know that you're. Highly regarded in that field. So, okay. Oh, well, very cool. Thank you very much for being our guest today. And um, we'll see you guys next week. We're going to be at Ono to Go, which is Wedge Lee's truck. Um, it's outside of Butterfly Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but we're going to be eating plate lunches and reviewing his stuff. So, hope yeah. to see you then. You're interviewing dancers? No dancers. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Wedge, Wedge said that he was going to bring me some girls. And then he kind of. Hey, why is he bringing you girls? He motioned over to. Um, uh, Sheridan Street. So, I don't know. Anyway. Well, well, I don't get girl, I don't rate girls. What anyway. Come on, Wedge. <laughs> we'll see you next week. I'm Melissa 808. I'm Nocturnal Beast. And. Yeah.